All right, let me tell you guys about our very first sponsor. When we first set out to make this podcast, we had absolutely no idea what we were doing, but we knew we needed a place to record, edit, host, and distribute our show. Luckily for us, we found Anchor, which has all of these services in one spot in an easy-to-use format on desktop or mobile, and it's free, which fit really nicely into our beginner budget of $0. We were able to distribute our podcast to all of the major platforms like Spotify, Apple, and Amazon. Download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. It's Mel and Kel, and this is It's Called Culture. Ever heard of it? We are back with what I guess we can call part two of the Igneish episode, but really it's kind of like different forms of treatments for Igneish, maybe, or for other things. Ooh, ooh, more anxiety. <laughs> By the time this episode airs, it will air while I am in San Miguel. I'm so excited for you. I'm super excited. So it's funny because we're going to be talking about a lot of this stuff and I'm going to just be out there with my eyes just darting all around trying to like look for these types of things while I'm out there. You got to like talk to you got to talk to locals interview. (laughs) This family trip turned into a business trip (laughs) real quick. (laughs) Yeah, this is going to be pissed. It's going to be like, what? (laughs) You're like, oh, I gotta meet the local now. This year, we're gonna talk about demons and devils and premonitions. So I can't go to the beach with you guys. Before we get into all the the actual treatment types, so I am still in the article that I mentioned towards the end of last week's episode, which was the one by Birdie Jane Bezenson, Lost in Translation: An Ethnographic Study of Traditional Healers in the Azorean Islands of Portugal. So. That's kind of where I'm going to pull a lot of my information from today. One of the things that they said that was really interesting, and it was kind of more where they were setting the stage for talking about the healers, they started talking about religion. And so it said religious practices embedded in the daily activities and plays an important role in the Azorian way of life, which of course we know that, but it said another obvious indication is the location of the parish or the igreja in the community, the positioning of the igreja, where kind of like everything, all roads lead to the igreja or whatever, all roads lead to the church. And it said even the term, this is the part I found most interesting, even the term freguesia, which I don't know about you, but I thought the term freguesia meant like village. Yeah, where you're from. Yeah, like the Freguesia, to me, in my mind, like my dad would tell me I'm from the Freguesia de Agua And I thought that was like the village of Agua Torta. I thought that's what that translation was. And it is not. It literally translates to parish or parishioners. And it's used as a regional designation. And so it says this term is often hard for the locals to translate to English as there's no corresponding term in English that involves both the church and state because it's like you're defining like the government by the church. Yeah. So they're not, (laughs) they're not big on uh, what is it? Separation of power there. Yeah. I was not aware of that either. Yeah. Cause I thought like Fagdazia, same thing was where you were from. Well, it is where they're from, but it apparently but is more like all centered around the parish. You're right. And the church. Which church is just always... mind blown emoji. The church is always at the epicenter. <laughs> and so with those religious undertones, we can kick right into talking about how they treat Agniaj and the different types of people that would treat Agniaj besides just quote unquote doctors and kind of differences between how things would be treated in the US or Canada versus in Portugal or the Azores. 
Right. So I'll just go ahead really quick to just to reference my article. So we're not like going, not bouncing back and forth. So a lot of my information will be coming from from ancestral knowledge to clinical practice, the case of Ignish and Portuguese clinicians in America. And a couple of authors on this is Susan James, Jeffrey Navarra, sorry, that's not right. Jonathan Wilfred and Ju Ann and Clark. And it looks like they're all from Canada, doctors from Canada. Both of the research papers that I referenced, I think both pulled from Susan James. I think I saw her name in mine. So like it's they're all intertwined. All right. I'll start here. It says one of the biggest societal problems on the islands that healthcare practitioners out there recognize is alcoholism. Not a beautiful thing. <laughs> So like that's their like number one problem on the island is alcoholism. And then it said that they've heard many stories from healthcare professionals of people going to the emergency room to alleviate a quote deep loneliness and to reduce an anxiety that did not seem to be organically based. Like that's so sad. Right. I realized as I got older, like when I drink, I get like Again, here I am. I'm going to use the word. I get like a gnish after I drink. Mm. So is that like a combination of that and loneliness for them? Alcohol is definitely a trigger for anxiety for sure. Right. As is caffeine. And so. Oh, caffeine. They're having a little vino with dinner <laughs> and then they're having a little after dinner espresso and a gnish, a gnish. I don't know how you do that. You love to have one of those. Oh, an after how. dinner espresso. Yeah. That's a whole conversation we can have at some point yeah. about <laughs> caffeine and my anxiety. I've had a I've had a roller coaster with caffeine. Yeah. We we'll, we can that can be another <laughs> another episode. So this article, Kel, there's a, an actual list of the different mm-hmm. types of he- healers, traditional healers on the islands. And it says, they're all in Portuguese, so I might butcher some of these pronunciations, but herbalistas, herbalist. Herbalist. To me, it just sounds like a maxinista, like herbalista. (laughs) Indiretish. To me, sounds like a chiropractor, someone who is going to indretar your bones. Yeah, that's what I was (laughs) thinking, like straighten it out. Yeah. And then there's the next one says, Mulher Cler do Livro, women who read from the book. And the book that they read from, we'll get into it. We'll get into it. We'll get okay. into it later. So, women who read from the book, that's a type of healer that we're going to talk about. Then we have Bruches, <laughs> the witches. Witches. Love and, it. And then this one I'm going to butcher. Curandej, like curers. curers. Yeah. Cur- <laughs> Curandej. Yeah. I don't know how to say it. I give you credit for pronouncing it. So, <laughs> and those are healers. Those are kind of like healers, curers, what have yeah. you. Which these are all some kind of form of that. So it's it's interesting. And then of course you have just regular traditional doctors. Born. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I can I can get into a little bit of both. I like that whole other aspect of like healers and stuff. So I can get into that. But I also, if I'm dying, I want to go see a doctor. <laughs> like take me to a hospital. Right, right. So from my article, some of the treatments that the patients would receive. One said that she had employed cognitive techniques when the version of igniage the client would experience translated into something like a panic attack. In other cases, she had used breathing as well as relaxation techniques, especially when she identified the cause of anxiety. These techniques, according to her, were not useful. (laughs) (laughs) The patient said that these were not useful when the person was just feeling overwhelmed and frozen. In such instances, she would try to sort through and entangle the root causes of the condition through a kind of talk therapy. So kind of like 
methods that we use today. Yeah, like a therapist kind of psychiatrist kind of deal. She also mentioned like depressed clients are more appreciative of medication than such therapeutic treatments. So some providers were aware of clients seeing witches, healers for treatment to complement their medical treatment. According to one practitioner for Igneous and whatever else comes with Igneous, several of our clients have gone to see a brusha. And usually when they go, it's because they are not getting from us what they need to get. They don't feel better. When further asked how he viewed the clients seeking out brushers and healers to get help, he responded, I think for many of our clients, especially the old, older clients, it is a way of trying to get some control over their care. However, another physician indicated that opposite, where clients come seek orthodox treatment only after going to the witches and healers and finding no improvement in their condition. So some still go to a doctor after they seek a healer. Yeah, it's so interesting because like the way that my research paper makes it seem is it's like people are only using these healers and they're not using doctors at all. But we'll go through it. So the first one that it talks about here is the herbalista, the Ma- TJ Maxinista. Maxinista. I like and, that one. <laughs> and that's like all the natural remedies to provide relief for physical ailments and distress, herbs, grass, you know, probably equivalent of a little Mary Jane. I right. Don't know. <laughs> Comparable to like the health food vitamin stores that we have. It just says that in the olden days, herbalistas worked mainly from their homes or other locations with little signage or indication of what was inside. Being an herbalista was a consequence of having, quote unquote, the gift and the community access them in their homes. So you were just, maybe she's born with it. Maybe it's Maybelline. <laughs> we don't know. That's what a Maxinista is all about. Okay. And then we get into, oh, it's calling this in Diretta. It's calling it a bone setter. So a chiropractor. Yes. One of these bone setters suggested that her skill had not been taught, but rather she had the sensibility to cure. Uh, (laughs) What's going on? (laughs) I would like to take my chiropractor with a little bit of experience. (laughs) And again, usually with no office space and people access this healer by visiting them in their home or calling for her to come to their home i feel like in the movies they're always like running to their homes or like they're running you know running to the healer's home we need a quick sidebar because i i don't regularly see a chiropractor but occasionally like if all of a sudden i have like a pinched nerve or something is like going on and i just need like one quick one quick session or something to like set me yeah. straight so I had a brief period where I was having some lower back pain and some pinch nerves, sciatica stuff. And I just, you know, went to the yellow pages or whatever. It wasn't really yellow pages, it was the Google. <laughs> Looked up the closest chiropractor to me. It was a couple streets over. It was a converted home. So it was in an area with other homes that were converted into businesses, like no big deal, whatever. And I went in. And it was this really old man and he had his one secretary woman. And I never ran into another patient while I was in there. Like every time I went, I was the only single person in there. Like I'd go in for my appointment. This guy would tell me I had one leg longer than the other or whatever it was that (laughs) he wanted to sell me on. And then I needed to keep going to him for more appointments. And then I would get back to the front desk and she'd be like, when would you like to schedule your appointment? We recommend, you know twice a week or once every two weeks or whatever the hell it was. And she had this planner in front of her and I could see over the desk. Like I'm looking at the planner, like I could see the planner and it was empty. It was just completely blank. Like there were no other appointments in this planner. And she'd be like, when is good for you? And I'm like, oh, like, what do you have available? And I'm looking and she would like flip the pages of the planner and they're just all blank. She's like, um, (laughs) you know, I could, I could do Thursday and like, 
I would just be like, what is this even a legitimate business? Like, what <laughs> is this? These two gave off vibes like they were boinking and I just and they were it was just <laughs> odd. Everything about it was just very strange. And then I got like an email or a notice in the mail that he was closing that up and he was going to continue to practice out of his own home. And I just was like, I can't, I cannot. That dude, not, I am not going to go drive to your home, senor. No that's thing. even fucking creepier. <laughs> I was like, I'm his only patient. He doesn't have any more patient. <laughs> did you go a couple of times or did you just go like that one time? I went a couple times to the quote unquote office setting Mm -hmm. version but then once he said that he was moving it to his master bedroom I said (laughs) this is where I draw the line senor no longer (laughs) he's just he's just trying to get you to join his relationship (laughs) I see those in Bumble all the time (laughs) where they're looking for a third (laughs) so they're just trying to do that oh god that was he was it was a long play he was playing the long game with that one (laughs) he sent me an official letter oh man i'm just concerned that he didn't have any clients like i I thought it was the weirdest thing like i feel bad i because i always have this thing where i just always fucking feel bad for everybody it's like i feel bad that he doesn't have any clients but why there's got to be a reason why you don't (laughs) He was already giving me like the creepy, creepy vibes while I was there. And then I was like, yeah, no, no. Yeah. No, I don't blame you. Oh, God. So that's that's chiropractor. (laughs) The bone collector. Okay. The bone bone collector. (laughs) He gave me he gave me. (laughs) She can't. She's not over it. I'm not over it. He gave me an inset to put in my shoe. To wear, Wait, do because- you really have one leg bigger than the other? He claims. He claims I have one <laughs> leg longer than the other. And I think it's because my hips, I've been told by another chiropractor years before that, that my hips are turned or whatever. Like, I don't know. Is it because so your, your kid messed you up? This was before my kid. So oh. <laughs> that I had like, like, I don't know, my pelvis is tipped or something to that effect. And so I think that is why I have, and I don't know, my daughter's got weird pelvis issues too but yeah because your daughter sees a chiropractor right yeah, she, yeah, yeah. her her chiropractor tells her she's got one foot longer than the other two <laughs> so whatever so this, this chiropractor told me that one foot was longer than the other and then he gave me an insert to put in my shoe so it was like this little gel kind of like a shoals pad kind of thing but right you, but you only put it in one shoe so that it can like balance out your legs and your hips aren't like torqued like or whatever i don't know and i'm like snood it's summertime i'm wearing a flip-flop how do i put this like insert in my flip-flop just it's gonna flip-flop right out of there like i don't (laughs) understand i didn't understand how you put a dr shoal on a flip-flop i was just gonna ask you that because i'm like what if you're wearing like an open toe like heeled shoe sandal and how how does that get in how does that get in there you can't it's gonna fly right out no, no. So yeah, it's not gonna work. I'm still lopsided. <laughs> I have yet to go to a chiropractor, but I probably should because they say uh, it's good to go. I like. I see these videos on TikTok of these like chiropractors who literally just do the most aggressive maneuvers on people's necks, and it just looks so satisfying, but also deadly, but also satisfying. <laughs> No, I know. My coworker goes to one like once. She does like once every week or once every two weeks. And she just gets like realigned. I'm like, that just sounds amazing. Like, I want to get realigned. I want my body and my mind (laughs) to be realigned. (laughs) That's on chiropractors, which I don't know. Portuguese people don't really strike me as a chiropractor type. No. My mom only went when she got into a car accident and she barely went and they would like give you the exercises to do from home. And my mom never did them. (laughs) So I don't see that either. The next one on this list is. um, I can't even say it. Um, 
Ler du livro. I'm interested with this one. The woman who reads the book. These women use the Livro du Seigneur Saint Christ, the Book of Christ, to tell the future. I'm quoting from this from this document here to tell the future, and they are mostly accessed when individuals are facing a myriad of problems in their lives or if they have to make major life decisions. The woman often gives advice and specifically tells people what to do or not to do. So it goes back to religion always. <laughs> It says, how does she do it? We put our hands on the book and she opens. She says some prayers and then opens this book of Christ. And she starts to read the page to us. And sometimes it's right with our life. And there are many people going there. These women are always full. Their houses are always full. What is the book of Christ? So this Am is... Am I missing something here? The Livre Saint... Seigneur Saint Christ. <laughs> Is that that's like isn't that like the it's not the it's not the Bible bloody, isn't that like the bloody <laughs> that's the bloody Jesus with the crown yeah with like the thorns and he's like bleeding crying blood yeah it's a very specific like, Portuguese I did this for you. version I of, did this for you <laughs> <laughs> yes but I think so I think it's a book specific to that oh okay they would be makes sense let's look it up real quick. Well, I'm just in Portuguese, Livre Sons Christ. Yes. So my Dos Milagres. Oh yes. Oh, okay. That sounds familiar. Sons Christ Dos Milagres, the miracles, right? Yeah. Okay. And so it's the yes, it's the very specific BD Jesus. Yeah. And he has his own book. My mom has this book. I was home. just gonna say, I did it recognize it you telling us like in english but in <laughs> as soon as you said it in portuguese i'm like oh i know what it is yes so my mom has this book so maybe she's a maria maybe maybe she's a woman of the book of christ i don't know but they try to read it it says and they try to read between the lines about what will happen to you like telling the future so almost like tarot card reading. It says, <laughs> <But> so, <nah. laughs> yeah, the very next okay. thing it says is these women closely resemble what would be called a fortune teller in English. Cool. Have you ever gone to a fortune teller? No. I'm a little bit scared, but I have been really enjoying tarot card readings on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's because the, al- the algorithm just pushes them to your feed. And obviously, yeah. the more of them you watch, the more they continue to get pushed to your feed. But they, I'll just be scrolling and they'll be like, stop. The, like the next video comes up and it's like, stop. This message is for you. If this video found you on July 31st, this message is for you. The spirit guides have moved me to give you this message. And I'm just like, give it to taking me. Taking it all in. Yeah. Take You're it like, all taking in. it all in. <laughs> You're like, yes. And if it's like a message that I don't like, I just scroll past it. But if it's a message I like, <laughs> if it's a works. message I like, I'm like, yes, yes, I receive this energy. Yes. <laughs> You're like, ah, oh, yeah, I don't like this one. So I'm just going to go by. Yes, I, find, I keep going until I find a message that I like. <laughs> Incredible. But have you gone to a tarot card reader? I've gone. I've gone twice to the same lady. I think like few years apart it was like old lady and it was kind of cute because it was here in the city you would go to her house so again it was at her house <laughs> so in two separate occasions I went with my cousins and so while she was with one person in the room doing doing her thing you stayed in the living room watching tv with her husband <laughs> stop Stop. I think she had like a pet bird. But like, yeah, you would watch like TV on the couch with her husband. She would be in the other room and then you would switch off. Like when she was done with like, you know, when she was done with my cousin, I went in and my cousin watched TV with her husband. <laughs> so I feel like there was like a nanny cam situation with like an ear earpiece, an air pod or something in her ear. <laughs> And the spirits that were moving her 
were really just like you talking in the living room and she was like <laughs> picking up information Ration. and using it in her reading for her your imagine that. <laughs> yeah, yeah that stinks to high heaven even the bird was it a parrot like the parrot was definitely I think it was a bird the husband was so nice and he was so cute they were old couldn't really remember what she told me honestly she did say I would find the love of my life. He would be a man in the uniform with blue eyes. Still waiting for him. <laughs> Still waiting for him. <laughs> that man in uniform. We'll see. Right, right, right. The ones on tic- the ones on TikTok are free. You don't even have to pay. <laughs> Do you think they'll tell me that the love of my life is in uniform? Maybe. <laughs> You can just scroll until they do. <laughs> until I find one. So, yes, these women were like fortune tellers, apparently. But it says, unlike fortune tellers, these women were considered to play a significant role in the healing practices of society. Although some people did not seem to take them seriously. I think that's always going to be a thing. It's the unknown. It's if, what you don't know. You don't like, don't know if you want to believe it or not. How is this? Let's let's just get back to this, though, because it's saying that unlike fortune tellers, these people are actually healing a Ganesh. But like all they're doing is reading from the book of Sanskrit. I like you're going to go there and you're going to be like, She's going to read a couple passages out of this book and then tell you what to do with your life and your agnias are gone. It's crazy. But isn't that kind of like with the church when you go to confession? <laughs> you tell them what you, you tell them all your sins and then you pray and you're all of a sudden you're not a sinful <laughs> person <laughs> and you just believe it. I Yeah, I suppose. Do you think a lot of this is too like the like the power of our mind like we just if someone tells you if someone like this tell i Mm -hmm. i think my thing is like i believe in a lot of this you know i'm all for like i'm all for this um i believe in some of it and some of them just like uh oh it's you know some of it's crazy so i'm not hating on any of this but do you, I'm just saying, like, do you think it could be like the power of your mind that you're like he has this healer telling you this and that and boom you're like okay i believe this and it's going to work. I absolutely think that your mind is completely in charge of so much of what you feel and anxieties and even anxieties that manifest physically and all of that. So yeah, I guess. But like I mean, if you got a stomach bug, <laughs> you, go, <laughs> you go see the woman of the book, what is she going to do? <laughs> right. That you would think you would go, you would go to your her- herbalist, right? <laughs> <laughs> you got to make the right choices. <laughs> they would give you a concoction, right? Yeah. Drinking tea was always like a cure-all too. Even till this day, if I'm like, oh, I don't feel good. I feel like a stomach ache. My mom would be like, do you want Shazane? And it's like, what is, t- like, tea is not going to help my stomach. <laughs> Are you ready for witches? Absolutely. I smell fall. So the the brusha, a healer most commonly associated with black magic or evil, translates to witch, sorceress, or enchantress, or even some people call them like mediums, but they were not generally seen to facilitate wellness, it says. Residents of the island were quick to warn against visiting them. Oh, witches weren't a thing. They didn't like to go to witches. Well, it's kind of all over the place. I don't know. It said it said they're sometimes sought after by women when their husbands are thought to be having an extramarital affair. <laughs> all right. Or when a young bride wants to ensure that her groom makes it to the altar. <laughs> I, I get that. <laughs> I would... <laughs> I would be well for that one. Previous research in North America with these Orient immigrants suggested that 
witches do help people by fending off bad spirits with the aid of rituals that offer prayer fruit, flowers, incense, or candles. However, the people from this study more commonly associated bruches with evil curses. <laughs> Nobody would name a witch that they were acquainted with. Many of them spoke of one of the witches who caused a death by using poisonous herbs. Damn. I like witches. <laughs> there was always rumored in my family that somebody was a witch. So this particular person that was a witch, our family stopped talking to them, not because she was a quote unquote witch. I think she probably just was interested in this stuff, just mm. like how I am. And if you believe in anything else besides Jesus Christ, you're the devil. Mm. <laughs> so maybe that's why. But my mom is like convinced that when this person came and visit my mom and me when I was I was like a baby. And they came to visit and they gave a gift. And after that person left, I started choking. And my mom, till this day, will tell you that she put like a little spell or something on me. My mom's convinced. <laughs> convinced, convinced, convinced. But did you die though? <laughs> no. <laughs> my mom said that like she pulled out like this like plastic thing in my mouth. So I don't know. If you start choking tonight when you go to bed, you'll know why. <laughs> I feel like it's my acid reflux. Knee-ish. <laughs> I have a knee <laughs> All right. And now we're getting into the last category of these, like, healers. You would think almost because they're such a, like, a religious culture that they would be against going to these. I know. Well, Jesus was a healer. He healed... The guy with the leprosy, right? <laughs> Jesus was a brusha. Yeah. So why are some people against this then? It seems like they're not. Against well, they're, they're a little sketchy on witches, but it seems like all the rest of the... They're okay with. Yeah. Fru fru magic, they're okay with. So one of the very first things in this section about cures talks, <laughs> it has this... Azorian proverb highlighting a trust in God. And it says, Dej a kimkuda, you med go lavo dnid. It's God who cures and the doctor who gets the money. <laughs> That's hysterical. That's amazing. The doctor, you are actually not doing anything. You went through all those years of medical school. You have no idea what you're doing. You're just taking the money, and God is the one who is curing me. Me. And you're wow. just taking the money. Isn't that great? It's awesome. I'm going to say that to my doctor next time. <laughs> Listen, Zitur, <laughs> Senor. I'm not paying this copay. <laughs> this was Jesus. Jesus fixed me. It says these cures use many different types of treatments depending on the nature of the problem. Most often, they'll give a mixture of herbs. So I don't know. Are they an herbalista also? I don't I, I'm seeing some overlap. But it says that people, so people will drink as tea. So here's your Shah. Here's, oh, your, here's your teas. My Shah Zane's coming back. This one person who was suffering was told to drink tea made from the leaves of a bitter orange tree and to, quote, be calm, end quote. <laughs> I'm just laughing because, like, how do you tell someone to be calm? It's like telling them, like, telling someone to relax. <laughs> you know, like, when people get mad, like, don't tell me to relax. <laughs> this gets better. In her case, she had said she had been very nervous and the hair on the front of her head had fallen out. She was grateful that the curer had cured her. But when I met her, she did not seem concerned that her hair still seemed to be falling out. <laughs> oh, no. So she has alopecia. Drink this sha and be calm. Drink the tea and be calm. And your hair and your hair's going to come back. Well, no, he doesn't even say that. No, but she was grateful. She was cured. I like that. <laughs> I like the be calm. It's like that. What are those stupid 
decoration keep calm and carry on or something like that right <laughs> keep calm and drink tea or whatever oh yeah that's going on the merch that's going on the merch <laughs> that's right when merch is ready we'll too we'll talk we'll make an announcement on merch <laughs> keep calm and drink tea so this other woman who had been to many cures was told to wash her grandson in a mixture of herbs she was able to identify rosemary as one of the herbs, could not identify the others. Her grandson, quote, saw things, dot, 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 a soul, souls from the other world, end quote. The young boy also described people pulling at his feet, which caused him to faint. Grandmother was instructed to burn a bunch of herbs while praying in the boy's home to get rid of the evil spirits. This is a common activity that is prescribed by curers for people who suffer from the evil eye, which you you will have to explain to me what that means, because I don't know what the evil eye is. Wait, so before before we get into that, um, (laughs) so why didn't the lady just like sage her house? Maybe that was the herb. She obviously just has ghosts in her house and maybe because young like younger people can see ghosts more than people our age so like maybe your son the son was young the grandson grandson just young and little and so he can see them so just sage your house maybe that was the herb that she was supposed to burn oh okay because it did say to burn a Mm -hmm. burn a herb okay yeah oh that we get all into this (laughs) And then now we want to go back to the evil eye because you said you don't know what it means or, you know, I don't know what of it really. I I really don't know. So the evil eye is like um, a look or a stare that someone gives you and it's like bad luck. They're giving you that stare or that look and it's like a curse. What? (laughs) (laughs) Like it's like a um, (laughs) Let me, I'll give you specific what it is. It's like a Greek, it's a, it's in the, actually the Greek culture. People can not only wish negative thoughts on you, but the power of the eye is that some people unknowingly cast a curse on others. Just by looking at them. And anybody Correct. can do this? Yeah. And that's why it's important to wear an evil eye somewhere on your body to like ward it off. So when a person wears or carries an evil eye... It guards them against misfortunes happening in one's life. So you have to wear the eye. Wear it. Like I have a little like bracelet that I wear. You wear just a random evil eye. Yep. So to- back to this. Sorry. Back to this person. That's a witch. <laughs> so the evil eye is like a big thing with my family because this person, so-called witch, they believe that they were like. Like, okay, like my mom thought she cursed me and made me choke on something. So this is why like wearing an evil eye was like a big thing for us. You you gotta like choose to either believe it or not, right? <laughs> okay. So have you been wearing an evil eye since you were like a baby? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm not. Do you have like an evil eye an evil eye onesie? <laughs> No, but they do have them now. And I was like, oh my God, this is so cute. Only if I want if I wanted a child, I would have I would definitely be getting one of them. Absolutely. Okay. So my question is the person who gives you the evil eye, mm-hmm. do they know they're giving you the evil eye? Uh, do they know they're cursing you just by looking at you with their eyes? <laughs> I would think so. Like the evil eyes, a look or a stare that is believed to give bad luck to the person who is directed for reasons of envy or dislike. And it's like a jealousy thing. Well, also like not into it. <laughs> the most widely accepted evil eye bead color is blue. Mm-hmm. Is your future husband an <gasps> evil eye? Oh, that's good. Nah, that's not good. That wouldn't be good. <laughs> That wouldn't be good if he was an evil eye, right? In a, what did you say? In a suit? In a in uniform? In a uniform. Oh, would he be my evil eye as like my protector? Ooh. Would he be would he be my own like my own personal talisman? 
Your personal what? <laughs> Talisman. <laughs> I'm over this because this is like real, like, I'm getting your real reactions with this stuff because I thought like you kind of, I thought you knew some of this stuff. No. No. Maybe I only know about it because I had this family member that was a witch, apparently. Interesting. Interesting. So I'm going to keep going here. <laughs> For healthcare providers, treatment from these curers provides a valuable service because they provide psychological support and the placebo effect, which is very important. So like the actual doctors think the curers are good because they give these people a placebo effect. This is saying that they would actually fly these curers from Portugal to like Boston. No way. One of the local curers from Portugal took a direct flight to Boston four times in a five-month period. He goes because people pay him to go there to fix things that they only trust him to do. So people, probably immigrants for sure, they pay his ticket to go from here to there to solve their problems. That's how famous he is. So you're paying a healer. (laughs) You're paying the healer to come take a vacation (laughs) to give you a placebo (laughs) (laughs) again i'm all about this stuff so i'm into it so i'm not making fun but yeah you just pay this guy to come to the united states (laughs) i'm all about the placebos but this sounds like an expensive placebo right (laughs) exactly (laughs) so this next part says that Sometimes people are tired and sick because they go see doctors and psychiatrists in Canada or the U.S. And most of the time, psychiatrist says, you know what? You're crazy. I'm going to put you on Prozac. I'm going to put you in a mental institution. And that is it. That's why most of the time people say, no, I'm not crazy. I'm seeing things. (laughs) Um, He explained how the mental health care of Canada effectively silenced immigrants because the Azorian ways of expressing distress is often misunderstood. I'm sure if an Azorian were to go to a psychologist in Canada and talk about that the spirit, the spirit possession, he would have quite a problem. Oh, <laughs> they basically like they can go to all of their doctors and healers in Portugal and be like, "Listen, I am dealing with spirit possession." They're going to be like, okay, let's fix it. And then it's like totally normal. But they go here and like, you're going to be put in a straitjacket real freaking quick. No. So you're just going to continue to see spirits and demons and all that and be possessed. Because America doesn't want to add that into the insurance plan. (laughs) (laughs) Your premiums go up if you have to deal with spirit possession. (laughs) You, you don't, I'm sorry, we can't. You, have, you didn't get the supernatural plan. <laughs> like, we can't help you. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, that's so great. <laughs> so I'm almost imagining these healers being kind of like a speakeasy. Right. You don't know about it type of thing. Right. right? Like it's like, it's like disguised as like a barbershop up front. And then. <laughs> You walk through like the closet in the back and there's like a little healer in the corner. Like, is that what's happening out there? That's like, a, is that how these pl- people have a place? Like, you ain't going to find them on Yelp. Right. Yeah. You need, you yeah. Need a secret pass- <laughs> you need a secret passcode to get in there. To get it's in. The, it's the black door, fourth door down. <laughs> like, you're going to have to like try to see if you, I want you to try to find a healer while you're out there. <laughs> I know. I well, I hope I don't like come down with something that needs healing while I'm there. <laughs> no, but. I know. No. <laughs> I just want you to see if they're like at a storefront or <laughs> they probably have billboards for them now. What was that woman in the 90s that used to be on all the commercials? She's come on way late at night. She was like a fortune teller woman. Cleo. 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 Miss Cleo. <laughs> Miss Cleo. I think that she was like all 
one of my episodes I listened to my pod, one of my other podcasts that I listened to, they did a whole episode on her about her being like a fraud, which I was like, oh, makes sense. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Miss Cleo, that's right. I have a few more things in this article. This one I think makes me a little bit sad. It says members of the community did off did not often question healthcare professionals, and they maintained the attitude that. Bose ak sab, it's you that knows when dealing with physicians and nurses. Some healthcare professionals believe this was because of a lack of health education. One elaborated the fear of what do I have? A little pain that transforms itself into a huge pain, a big thing that sometimes is nothing. Do you understand? We see that a lot here. Here, I mean, not only here, but in the whole country, we see a lack of health education. You don't know what you have. You are afraid. Then you go to the doctor for any reason. So this is like the opposite of your dad. This is like someone who's running to the doctor for answers for everything, which was like I had one grandfather that was like that. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. That's definitely not my dad. You had a grandfather like that. Yeah. And then I had one like the opposite. So like it was. I felt like you were either one end of the spectrum or the other, like either you were like so fearful and you just wanted the doctor to fix everything, little thing that was wrong with you, or you didn't trust the doctors at all and you didn't want to go at all. Right. We're like a a wait and see type of people. Like, where does the wait and see fall? Like, we're like, let's wait a week. If it doesn't get better in a week, then maybe we'll go to the doctor. (laughs) Like Mm. type of situation. I I guess towards the end of this, I'm just getting sad with all of these things that I've highlighted here. But Azorians say that, quote, when people have an illness or disease, this gives life meaning. We must have a cross to bear and the cross to bear can even be illness or disease. Why not? It gives life meaning. This supports the redemptive value in suffering and the relationship suffering creates with the divine for the Azorians. Why do they need to suffer so much? It's like that con they just stay in that like constant state of suffering, like a sadness, suffering. Like it, it's almost they're afraid to like express like happiness. So just like in the past couple days, I sent you these pictures from some celebration that mm-hmm. was happening. A celebration, like a, a fun celebration that was happening in my dad's village. And they had posted these pictures on Facebook back. So from San Miguel. And I looked at the pictures and there was tables upon tables of people all sitting in chairs at this celebration of food and games and whatever was happening. And I was like, Kelly, look at this picture. There's not a single person smiling. There was not one smile to be had in the like 75 people that were seated at this event. And I'm like, yeah. this is so indicative of how our people are. Yeah, it's fucking just, sad. Which is miserable. Yeah. I have to yell at my mom to smile in a freaking picture. I'm like, why, do, why don't you smile? Oh, like, what am I going to smile for? What do you mean what are you going to smile for? <laughs> They don't like my dad doesn't smile. I don't think my dad knows how to smile. My mom, <laughs> at least I can get like a, you know, like a little bit of a lip uh, move, movement. <laughs> but yeah, they don't. It's so interesting because my. Like grandparent level generation, all of those people, like they don't smile at all. No. And. Straight face. I'm even like, I my, get it. Even my dad, like I can go through like hundreds of pictures of my childhood and growing up and you'll you you catch a smile like once every hundred pictures and you're right. like, what? Like, it's so bizarre. Or maybe they're just not used to taking pictures. But do you think that they feel as miserable as they look? Oh, man, sometimes I think they do. But <laughs> I feel I feel bad that they're miserable. Yeah. And, and I don't know if they're truly miserable. Like, I feel like they enjoy the misery. I don't. I don't. Do just, think, I don't know. 
do you think they almost feel like they don't deserve like the like like good things in life like they don't deserve it like they feel like they think they don't they don't deserve it almost i don't know why they think it but yeah like it seems like they are so embedded in the like the religion that it's it's like well christ suffered i need to suffer and i need to show christ that i'm suffering so i am going to not smile i'm going to just be miserable all the time and this is how i'm going to yeah bear, bear my cross and this is how i'm going to suffer and we're going to suffer together as a community and we're all going to be like this like it's so strange but homeboy suffered and he came back (laughs) he came he came back and like hung out (laughs) they have like a fear of happiness it's like a fear of happiness and i don't know about the ones that are still living out there on the island but like maybe with our parents since they like emigrate immigrated here do they feel like they can't be happy that they're like out of that situation of living on the island and not like not having to be worried about freaking their island freaking getting destroyed or their towns getting homes being destroyed? So they almost feel guilty that they live here. Well, I don't know. It's a whole psychology behind it. Why they're so miserable? Or I, are I don't they even feel, I don't even feel that anymore. I feel like now I've. I think that they're almost more miserable that they're not on the nice island. I would. Yeah, that's how I would feel. I would I would be pissed that I'm like, I, I am here on uh, like I I left there. Like right. at the time for them coming here, it probably seemed like an amazing idea. Right. Now, and now I would be like, send me back. You're just like, we, we fucked up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. We fucked up. That was a yeah. great place. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, it's crazy. Just so all so we could have a better life and we could talk about them on our podcast. Right. <laughs> so with that, we're going to go into our new segment. Do, 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 do. It's called Mental Health. Two tips, one from each of us. So we can get some smiles <laughs> <laughs> coming out of us, coming out of these people. So we're not all just looking miserable. I can go first. Mine is quick and easy. My tip today is going to be someone actually, a friend of mine is the one who put me onto this when I was having really bad anxiety and it was ashwagandha supplements. So I just ordered them on Amazon. They taste a little peppery. They kind of, I feel like they have a peppery aftertaste to them and they're pretty big horse pill, but they are supposed to be like kind of like a stress relieving, reducing thing. And at the time I was taking them, I was also taking CBD oil pills. Both of those things I feel like are great placebos. (laughs) So I don't know how much they actually help or didn't help, but they made me feel like I was doing something because I was taking my ashwagandha and my CBD twice a day. And then I eventually just weaned off of them, but it helped me for the period of time that I needed them. That's awesome. Yeah. I remember you sent them to me and I still yet to, I saved it, but I hadn't um, ordered it obviously. Cause I'm very one like, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to get that. I'm going to get that. And then I don't, I have, I have sucky follow through with some stuff. <laughs> Do you feel like it was a placebo or just you don't know? Because I know other people that take it. Like my friends, my coworker's mom takes it and it helps her with like her blood pressure, apparently. I mean, so. it's a, it's it helped me through that period. So whether yeah. it's a placebo or not, either way it was helping. <laughs> you know. Um, not bad. And then I eventually was like, oh, I feel good. I don't need to take these anymore. But it was a crutch for me for a while where I was like, yeah. Oh my god, my I, I got bad anxiety. Let me take these pills, and it was helping. So, so mine's is a book that I am currently, I would say, mid reading because I take like a lot of breaks sometimes when I read a book. <laughs> um, so mine's is the Worry Trick, and I was just looking up his. The author is David Carbonell, and it's the worry trick how your brain tricks you into expecting the worst and what you can do about it so it just gives you like tricks sorry it gives you like tips and strategies on how to like if your mind is thinking one thing how to get out of it and i'm a couple chapters in 
took a break from it. Don't know why. <laughs> Haven't got back into it, but I did really like the book. So I just need to give myself some more time to get it back into reading it. Yes, I will push you to keep reading that because I feel like that's something that I always tell you about is it's like it's all in it's all mind work and training yeah. your mind to be to think differently. And that's kind of how I eventually walked worked my way out of my crippling anxiety disorder. And it's it's amazing what you can do if you just have a different way of thinking. Just, just think think differently about it. Yeah. And like try to have a positive way of thinking it. Yeah. And I think part of it was just not feeding into the negativity. It's not like there's not ever going to be a negative thought that pops into your head ever again. Like you'll never get that to fully go away. But when, when the negative thought appears instead of feeding it. <laughs> right. You just acknowledge it. Feel it. Shut it down. You know, yeah. like I constantly feed it. I know I'm you do. It up. <laughs> <laughs> I give it way too much power. <laughs> I'm constantly oh. feeding, giving them snacks, granola. Cash me, cash pop me. Son of a bitch. Cash pop, cash popish. <laughs> oh, my anxiety, my anxiety lives rent free. I just start charging it. <laughs> So I'm going to wish my future self a wonderful trip in San Miguel and a safe trip home. And I will see you guys on the other side of that. So it's about that time. Thanks for listening. If you're enjoying our podcast, please just give us a review on whatever platform you're using to listen to us. You can also visit our website. It's folkandfad.com. We have transcripts available there of every episode, and you can also send us an email, mail at folkandfad.com, or you can hit us up on Twitter, same handle there, folkandfad. And for Instagram, you can follow us at underscore it's called culture.